Hey y'all, um, so I'm just going to do a pretty cumulative video on some of the most amazing math you'll find in the Bible. Um, so the Bible is extremely scientific, um, despite, <clears throat> excuse me, despite what skeptics or scientists want to claim about it. And there's a huge um, thing called gematria, where every single letter is a number, and every, and every single letter also has meaning uh, despite that uh, having a number. So, speaking of that, let's start with the very first word of the Bible, which is Bereshit, which is in the beginning. And if you look at Hebrew, the alphabet um, has meaning to it. Sorry, this is a little pixelated. Um, but you can Google this Hebrew letter meanings. And Aleph means God. Bet means um, house. And Resh means head. And Shin means, um, let's see, uh, to be taken down. Yod means hand. And To, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, means a cross. I'm sorry y'all can't read that, but that is what it means. So basically, the first word in Genesis, Bar, Bet and Resh means son, like Bar Mitzvah, when you become a man. The son of God, Aleph, is taken down, Shin, by uh, his own hand, Yud, on the cross. So the very first word of the Bible, even though it's quote unquote the Old Testament Judaism, is actually hiding the New Testament prophecy within the first word. Okay, um, here's another thing that's quite incredible. Greek gematria of Lord Jesus Christ, uh, which is uh, Kyrios Jesus Christus, is 3168, and the diameter of the sun is in megalithic miles is 31680 and the perimeter of the moon in megalithic miles if you put a square around the moon is 3168 and finally earth's um, perimeter in miles is 31680 okay and this is just using megalithic miles and miles okay it's not any kind of complex thing and let's go back to the first uh, verse of the Bible, which is Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz. And if you add it all up, it's 2701, which is a triangular number, right? Just like 666 and 153 fish and 276 souls saved in the book of Acts, etc. Um, but if you take the... Um, so if you multiply the product of the letters by the number of letters and divide it by the product of the words times the um, uh, number of words, then you get pi, 3.1415, okay? And pi is obviously the most important number um, in reality because it describes the perfect shape, which is a circle. And this is this is science, okay? This isn't complex Rama, R Ramanujan math. This is multiplication and division and addition. Speaking of addition, here's a really simple one. Isaiah 19, 19 uh, through 20 is literally the great pyramid text of Scripture. It's talking about um, they set up a pillar in the corner of Egypt, and that's obviously the great pyramid, right? Well, the total value of this verse that describes the pyramid is the height of the great pyramid in pyramid inches, 54, 49. And you can look that up yourself. You can add up the, all the numbers which are really the letters, which is really the Bible, which is really a mathematical code that hides reality. And you'll see that the verse that describes the Great Pyramid hides the height of the Great Pyramid. There you go. Uh, well, that's not the Bible, so we won't get into that. This is very interesting. All the 20 amino acids, um, all their mass just happens to be a fractal of 2701, which as we saw earlier, um, Genesis 1-1 is 2701. So... It's just literally 2701, which is a multiple of 73 and 37. You just add one more. So instead of 73 times 37 to get 2701, it's 74 times 37 to get all the amino acids mass right here, all 20 of them. And that's not, that's not uninteresting to me. This one's cool. As you can see, I'm just taking pictures from my Instagram, the... It's not really HD. I apologize because I snapped it from my phone. Um, so the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, their gematria in the Greek, see right here, 
Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, all that? Well, it's a fractal of the gematria of the 12 apostles, right? So if you add up the 12 tribes, it's 8880. You add up the 12 apostles in the Greek gematria, it's 10656. And what is 8880 times 12,000? 10656 without with some zeros. Okay. And we're not getting the number 12 randomly. It's the 12 apostles. So the 12 apostles divided by 12 equals the 12 tribes of Israel. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that not coincidence? Here's a very interesting thing, because a lot of people wonder, why was Methuselah's age so old? He was 969 years in Genesis 5.27. And it's funny that Methuselah starts with math, okay? And then we got the book of Numbers, you know, in the, in the Bible. And then we have um, just so many different references to math. Also Matthew, of course. But anyway, 969 is the 153rd triangular number. And 153 is also the fish in John 21, which is also a triangular number. So if you add up 153 triangles, it, it becomes a pyramid. So 969 is a perfect tetrahedron. If it was 968, if Methuselah was 968 years old, it would not hide this mathematical code. Okay, now let's move on. Tangents, I'm not going to get into that with y'all. Uh, as we said earlier, the uh, Lord Jesus Christ in the Greek, Kyrios Jesus Christus, equals 3168. And a perimeter of the square around the earth is 31680 miles. God is hidden in everything, not just spiritually, but mathematically. Here's another thing. The moon, as I showed you earlier, the perimeter of a square around the moon is 3168 megalithic miles. The perimeter of a square around the earth is 31680, as we just said, and the earth's radius is 31680 furlongs. It's, it's all a code within a code within a code. And here's Genesis 1-1 on top with John 1-1 one, one on the bottom. Here you go. Genesis 1-1 one, one is 2701, and that could also be uh, seen as 666, 666, 666, and 703. Why 703? Because 703 um, is a word in the Bible. It's not just a random number. And 3627 adds is John 1-1's one, gematria right here. So if you add that up, it's a triangular number in itself, the 112th triangle to be exact, which is 6328 units. So if you add up Genesis 1-1, one, one, it's a triangular number. But if you add John 1-1 one, one right below it, it's an even bigger triangle. John 1-1 one, one by itself is not triangular because it depends upon the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1-1. One, one. There you go. That's magic, which is science explained. There's Genesis 1-1 again. Here's the simple formula. For Genesis 1-1 to get pi, take the product of the letters times the, number, times the number of the letters, divided by the product of the words times the number of the words. Bam, you got pi. Here's the creepy thing. Same with John 1-1, which also starts with in the beginning. Enarchi in hologos, keologos in prostonteon, ketheos in hologos. Same formula. Product of the letters times the number of the letters, divided by the product of the words, times the number of the words, you get 2.718. What is that? That's E. That's, that's Euler's number. That's math. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the calculation of 100% interest, if y'all know anything about that stuff. It's incredible. The Bible hides all this stuff. In Isaiah... It talks about, Isaiah 66 talks about the new heavens and the new earth, just like Revelation 21 talks about the new heavens and the new earth. Old Testament and the New Testament both hide that. If you multiply the new heavens and the new earth while you drop the zeros, you get 24, or 248, 832. So 248,832. Well, what's the circumference of the earth? 248,831.392 miles. What? 
So the verse that says there's going to be a new earth hides the actual circumference of the earth to show that it knows what the hell it's talking about. Maybe. Perhaps. Okay, let's take two very famous Jesus prophecies in the Old Testament. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You know, the mighty God, the counselor, everlasting father, prince of peace. And then Isaiah 11, 1 talks about the branch and Jesus is the vine, that kind of stuff. Well, if you take every, you know, every sixth letter or something, it's Jesus. And for this one, if you take every ninth letter, it's also Jesus, the ELS code, which is 888. Sorry, it's not Jesus. It's the number 888, which adds up to Jesus, Jesus in Greek. Cool, huh? Once again, here's another way to see how the first verse of the Bible hides pi. There you go. That's the formula. If you didn't believe me the first five fucking times I said it. <laughs> here's a great one, y'all. So remember how the letters mean something, not just numbers? Well, yud means hand. He means revealed. And uh, vav means a nail. And what is this? This is Adonai. Some people say Yahweh, Yud, He, Vav, He, Yahweh, okay? Adonai is the way the Jews say it because you're not supposed to say God's name. But symbolically, what does it mean? It says hand revealed, nail revealed. The Old Testament name for God, even though there's many of them, the primary one is another prophecy of Jesus Christ, an archetype of the hand being nailed to the cross, okay? That's some deep stuff, y'all. Here's a great one. Sorry I'm going so fast. Pause it, you know, look it up yourself. This is all Bible gematria stuff. Um, so the circumference of the earth enclosing... A circumference of circle enclosing the earth and the moon. Okay, so if you have the circumference... Well, then let's look at Lord Jesus Christ, which is 3168. Okay, and Christu is one spelling in the Bible for Christ, and it adds up to 1680, okay? Well, if, if you multiply Christu, Ki, Rho, E, uh, Sigma, Toph, O, and U, you get 10,080, 10, which is the circumference of the earth and the moon together. So when you multiply Christ, you get the circumference of the earth and the moon. Okay, and then we have Christos, another spelling for Christ, is multiplied it's going to be 5,040, which is the diameter. Uh, well, it, which is the radius of the Earth and the Moon combined. At this, you know, if it was just one thing, that'd be something. But this just keeps popping up in different formulas and different um, calculations, y'all. Here's another way to look at Genesis 1-1. 2701. So 37 is a star number like this. And so is 73. And so is 541, which is Israel in Gematria. Israel is 541 in Gematria, but 37 and 73 are also star numbers. And so what does that make Genesis 1-1 then if it equals 37 times 73, two star numbers? A star of stars. This is another way to visualize the numerical code of Genesis 1-1. It's a triangle. It hides pi. It hides a star of stars. <laughs> and then John 1.1 1, 1 hides E. Equally important. Here's just a basic freaking rundown. E and John 1.1, 1, 1, using the same formula that you get in Genesis 1.1 1, 1 to find pi. And then here's alpha, right? You know, the inverse, uh, the, the, the uh, what's the constant? Uh, inverse of alpha is 137. Um, basically the square root of Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, if you add up Revelation 1.1 1, 1 equals 18.665. Sorry, it's so pixelated. Um, but what's the square root of eight, uh, um, 188.65? It's 137, okay, which is alpha, the inverse of alpha. Okay, and what is Genesis 1.1 1, 1 plus John 1.1, 1, 1, the square of that? 7.297, which is alpha itself which is the fine structure constant or some, something to that, that I don't see I'm not even a physicist but this stuff makes me interested 
in life, in reality, in what's going on, and what other codes are hidden in this magnificently underrated book that explains not only reality from the beginning, but reality, what it's becoming, what it's turning into, the end times coming right now. God already showed he has all the kinds of power to create the universe and record it in history. Moses didn't know Genesis hid pi. It wasn't his job to know that. It was God's job to hide it for future generations to understand it. But anyway, this is real stuff. And Christmas is pagan, so there's just this whole false Christianity running the world that says, the Bible, you should just have faith. You don't need all that science and all that stuff and get some presents every year. You should do that instead and get stuff every year. That'll show your faith. Anyway, there's a false Christianity going on, and you're most likely a part of it. So get out of all that, okay? Take the red pill.